crucified. 3. After his death, Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. This occurred in 70 AD, after Jesus' death. 4. The Jews were dispersed after his death. The Jews abandoned Judea after the Roman attack of 70 AD. He was a teacher. Jesus was a rabbi or teacher. He lived on after death and the teachings uh, Jesus and his teachings were founded the Christian faith. Uh, he was a wise king. Jesus was mocked by the Romans as the king of the Jews. The messianic prophecies fulfilled by Jesus referred to the coming Messiah as king. Christians believed uh, that Jesus was their spiritual king. Jesus was born of the royal line of King David. And, of course, he was Jewish. Now, moving on to the Babylonian Talmud. The Babylonian Talmud is an ancient record of Jewish history, laws, and rabbinic teachings compiled throughout the century. Though it does not accept the divinity of Jesus, it confirms the belief that he was hanged, an idiom for crucifixion, on the eve of the Passover. It says, On the eve of the Passover, Yeshu, some texts say Yeshu the Nazarene, was hanged, which means crucified, forty days before the execution. A herald went forth and cried, He is going forth to be stoned, because he has practiced sorcery and enticed Israel to apostasy. Any Anyone who can say anything in his favor, let him come forward and plead on his behalf. But since nothing was brought forward in his favor, he was hanged on the eve of Passover. Skeptic Interjection 1 how can we know that the Talmud is documenting Jesus' existence and not only stating the rumor surrounding a myth? Answer: In the above excerpt, the Talmud mentions Jesus' ability to perform miracles, but tries to dismiss it as sorcery. If the writers were simply refuting myth, they would most likely have dismissed the tale as a rumor, not assign alternate theories to defend their position. Skeptic Interjection 2 how can we know that this passage is a reference to Jesus and not another individual with the name Yeshu? Answer: Though it is possible this passage could refer to another individual, we know Jesus was killed during the Passover. We know he was crucified, a Jewish idiom for hanged. We know he was accused of practicing sorcery by the Pharisees for his miracles. And he was ultimately arrested for the sin of blasphemy, enticing Israel to apostasy. Furthermore, there are other translations which read Yeshu the Nazarene, which give us even more reason to believe that this passage pertains to Jesus. There are many more accounts that refer to Jesus and his existence from the 1st and 2nd century. And this of course does not include the many books and letters contained in the New Testament, where even the critics agree it was penned by at least five different authors. So we're talking about different letters from different times claiming to be, in some cases, eyewitness accounts of the historical happenings of the events of this man's life. Some common questions are, why is there no physical evidence or personal writings to verify Jesus' historicity? The Bible has been accused on several occasions of committing historical errors, but has later been proven accurate through archaeological finds. For instance, the Old Testament mentions a tribe of people known as the Hittites. Skeptics pointed out that there was no such civilization in history, yet in the 19th century, records of the Hittites were discovered within Assyrian ruins. Today, we know a lot about the Hittites, such as their language, craftsmanship, geography, and empire chronology. The New Testament mentions the Pool of Bathsheba as a place where Jesus healed a paralytic. No such location was known to exist until it was discovered in Jerusalem as a place where the sick would gather to seek healing. Just because an artifact has not yet been recovered does not mean none exists. In regards to personal writings, Socrates, for example, exists only in the writings of his students. There is not a single document still in existence that contains his original works. If we apply the same logic with Socrates, skeptics used to determine Jesus' historicity, we must assume Socrates was a figment of the imagination of his students. But if we are to accept Socrates as a historical figure based on four secondary accounts, we must also accept Jesus as a historical figure whose life was documented by his disciples, historians, and those who rejected his divine claims. When in conclusion, a lot of evidence has been presented during this discussion to confirm Jesus Christ as a historical figure. We have viewed accounts taken from numerous authors of different theological backgrounds 
and we've answered some common skeptic questions concerning Jesus' historicity. I purposely avoided using biblical evidence to support the existence of Jesus because that would be using the Bible to prove the Bible. Instead, we focused this study on extra-biblical sources. However, early Christian historians and witnesses were unanimous in their accounts that several New Testament books were written by eyewitnesses of both Jesus and the apostolic ministries. If these authors were indeed eyewitnesses, we can believe that they also provide evidence to the historicity of Jesus. Some readers may be satisfied with such evidence, some may not. Whatever the case, I encourage you to examine all the facts for yourself before reaching your conclusion. Thank you.